Greetings everyone, and welcome to my Helldivers 2 review video. So without further ado, let's dive into this hellhole. Pun intended. Alright, so what do you get when you put a bit of Starship Troopers, Earth Defense Force, Terminator, a bit of Left 4 Dead influence, and then stands Revolution Command inputs? You get Helldivers 2, a third-person collaborative shooter released on PS5 and PC, developed by Arrowhead Studios, published by Sony, and that is a follow-up to Helldivers 1, which was a top-down shooter, and sequel is a third-person shooter. Now, when this game was announced in 2023's State of Play, I didn't think it would be anything special, and it didn't definitely look like anything special back then. But I said it could look like a mindless fun game, and that was clearly inspired by Starship Troopers. And now when it's out, I gotta say, it's pretty fun. It really is. And so I want to go into more detail in this review. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the game takes influence from Starship Troopers with human military forces in the distant future fighting against alien bugs and spreading military propaganda. And in Hail Divers 2, you're a member of military forces of Super Earth that colonize the entire galaxy and are spreading democracy. An alien bug race known as Terminids are fighting back and taking over colonized planets. But there's a new threat in the form of robotized soldiers, a la Terminator style, called Automatons. And they both cause trouble for Super Earth's democracy. And your goal is to liberate the galaxy from both enemy factions and keep spreading the democracy, liberty, and freedom. At least that's how propaganda works. Hmm. <laughs> And now I gotta say the propaganda here is all over the place. And the game is not ashamed of it, because it's constantly making fun of the militaristic democratic uh, propaganda with its satire. And it's sometimes actually pretty funny. And like I said, it's based off Starship Troopers. And that was a pure satire, 101. When it comes to the overall storytelling, there's not really much to it. I mean, there's a bit of a lore but it's brought up mostly in environmental storytelling throughout notes and documents or events that happened beforehand like for example finding dead soldiers with PDA around or checking some old forklifts yeah stuff like that but the story is not focused here it's excuse for the setting it's meant to be a satire to military propaganda Helldivers 2 is gameplay focused and that's what matters the most so Helldivers 2 gameplay revolves around you and your other three squad mates liberating galaxy from both automaton and terminate forces by going to different planets and together completing various main and side objectives set on those planets such as destroying outposts, enemy emplacements, nests or fabricators, rescuing civilians and escorting them to the shuttle bay, establishing communications link, getting oil, or just surviving waves of enemies and killing as much as possible. And when the main objectives are completed, or if the mission time runs out, you have to get to the extraction point to call in a transport ship and board it to escape back to your super destroyer. So the basic idea is simple. Oh, and collect those samples. You'll need them. But when you first start the game, you have to pass training level to familiarize yourself with controls and basic actions. And then the game really begins. Now you get to commandeer your own ship, which you name to your liking, and that ship serves as basic hub. Here you can upgrade your ship components, buy weapons, support strikes, accessories to your character model that will help you in progressing through the game. And at the galaxy map, you select missions to your liking, select the difficulty, and prepare for dispatch. And you have players to join you, or you can join in quick play. And also, this game has crossplay, which is great. And there are nine difficulty levels, and the hardest being Hell Dive. And now each mission has its own set set of objectives and criteria, including the time limit. And yes, the missions have time limit. Now the longer missions with multiple main and side objectives usually have 40 minutes time limit. And some smaller missions like Search and Destroy, where you have to destroy enough bug holes or robot fabricators have 12 minutes time limit to prevent players from just sitting back and wasting time on the game but if you're struggling with the mission and being slowed down it's not enough time to complete 
fully. And then you have extermination missions, which take 15 minutes to complete, max. You just eliminate a certain number of enemies depending on the difficulty. Now when it comes to loadout, you have one primary, one secondary weapon, one grenade type, and you can choose which stratagems you want to take with you. These are your support weapons in the game. Now when you want to use one of the stratagems, you must type in correct sequence of button inputs to call it in on the battlefield. Now those can be airstrike supports, a support or third weapon of various kinds, items such as backpacks and supplies, shield generators, turrets, jump pack and more. Now this is a co-op game through and through, so teamwork is a must here. And as a team, you must coordinate well and support each other since your characters are very fragile and they can be killed very easily by tougher enemies or being swarmed. They can also get killed by stage hazards and friendly fire is on, so expect a lot of team kills if you're not careful. By default you get 4 stim pack shots which heal you completely, but you can also give some to a player who's lacking those. Thankfully there's an option to respawn kill players, opting as reinforcements which you call in support stratagems. Now you also have resupply which lands 4 ammo boxes, the refill ammo and stim packs. And backpacks can be carried by one player with 4 ammo boxes and refills players ammo. And that is very cool. We have airstrikes which will blow up anything that's been signalized and there are different types of airstrikes like precision airstrikes, barrages, carpet bombing, napal bombs, orbital strikes and you even get a 500 kilogram freaking bomb which can blow up the toughest enemies no sweat. And just be aware the blast radius is enormous. It's so satisfying to watch 500 kilogram bomb just exploding and just obliterating everyone. Awesome. Now let me talk more about enemies. You have terminated bugs and automaton robots. Now bugs mostly rely on swarm numbers while automatons have technology and firepower on their side. Now bugs have mostly melee types except the spitter types such as bile spewer, some small ones that spit acid at you and they are even able to insta kill you on higher difficulties which is bullshit. You have these pricks that go invisible and they are very annoying and then there's charger who's a heavily armored bug type and likes to charge at you. If you don't have anything explosive you'll hardly do any damage as most bullets will just ricochet off his thick armor. His weak spot is its exposed tail, so don't hesitate, just blast them with the most powerful weapon you've got. So fuck them! And now for the strongest bug type, these are called Bile Titans. They're the biggest enemy type in the game and they require heavy fire to be put down. Its weak spot, its belly, but you can blow it up with 500 kg bomb, orbital laser, railgun, bazookas. That is the easiest way to take them down. And these guys can squish you instantly and they spit acid at you. And Bile Titans are the highest priority enemy types. And on hardest difficulty, the Hell Dive, they spawn every couple of minutes. And there can be multiple Titans on the screen at the same time. Yeah, just to ruin your day. And they're pretty good at it. Now overall, bugs are easier to fight than the Automatons. And Automatons are harder much harder enemies to fight against. Now Automatons have weaker and tougher melee types that use razor wrist blades to slice you up. Ranged ones they use plasma rifles and rocket launchers even. And then you have these fat flamethrower fuckers that just pretty much insta kill you when being burned. And they also have like a s circle blade to slice you up. Then you have A2A2 ones controlled by regular Automatons. So your best option is to kill the operator if you don't have anything explosive. We can use grenades to blow up their legs or some other explosive weapon to just blow them all together. Now automatons also use turrets, auto cannons. they bombard you with artillery and they can throw grenades at you and they place landmines to blow you up. And because they have range and such versatile and overwhelming sometimes firepower that's why they're altogether much harder enemies to fight. And when you're fighting them, it really feels like those future scenes from Terminator films. It really feels like you stepped into Robo Hell. But besides regular enemies, 
There are also stage hazards, such as meteor showers, fire tornadoes, you have earthquakes to slow you down, but you also have iron storms that corrupt your map, and there are also weather changes in day and night cycles, which is really appreciated mid-game. Now you really feel hostility and overwhelmingness of the planet you're liberating, and when you complete the mission successfully and extract safely, it feels so rewarding. Now it's time to address objectively bad things about the game. Its framework can be inconsistent, and you can get momentarily screen freezes sometimes, which always make me think it's the EXE crash. It does have a lot of bugs and glitches, but I rarely encountered soft locking or game breaking ones, which is good. But what isn't good is game crashing quite often, and god forbid it crashes before you return to the ship, or your progress won't be saved, and you have to repeat the whole mission, and that sucks. The game has a lot of performance issues. Now for other criticism, like I mentioned earlier, such and destroy missions are too short sometimes. And now the difficulty can also be unbalanced sometimes, with unpredictable spawns, when sometimes you will be bombarded with enemies constantly. Like sometimes it can feel like, like there are a million enemies coming at you and you can barely survive. Sometimes waves are too sporadic and not as frequent, so it doesn't feel as overwhelming and it sometimes feels like a breeze. It's very RNG based. I also think some certain enemy types have to be nerfed, like bile spewers dealing less damage, let's say Hulk destroyers should get less health and doing a bit less damage because they're overpowered as fuck and they can be found in huge numbers. I mean if you don't have overwhelming firepower if you don't blow them up, they're gonna ruin your day. And now speaking of updates, community has a lot of suggestions for the game, and it's a leak that we'll get some vehicles soon, which will make the game feel more like you're on the battlefield. I mean traversing the planet with APC or such would make the things less tedious than just sprinting from one end of the map to the other, and also making it more engaging and giving the battles bigger scale, which would make fights more epic indeed. I mean, imagine fighting r automaton tanks with your own tanks. Now we're even, bitch! Things such as helicopters, APCs, jeeps, or whatever would make the game feel much, much more epic. So I don't know why they're not included in the first place, so I hope they'll be included very soon. And what else to say? Well, if you're not into cooperative games such as Left 4 Dead, Killing Floor, and such, it's hardly anything this game will win you over. As usual, it depends on with what kind of players you're playing. If you have a good team, you'll have a good time. But if you have a bad team, you'll have a bad time. And it can be infuriating. And I must say that, overall, for a $40 indie game that got third party now, and hopefully get Xbox port as well to get extra player base to keep the game alive longer, I mean, it's pretty damn fun. And it's so satisfying to beat the level with barely any supplies after very intense fights where you kill a shit ton of enemies beforehand, just being overwhelmed left and right, and you barely make it to the escape shuttle. Blowing up and tearing up bugs and robots is fun, and it's way better than Starfield for sure, I gotta say that. And with that said, I would at least recommend trying Helldivers 2 for some good co-op fun, if you're willing to accept all of its objective problems. And if you want to skip the game, that's understandable. And so I hope developers will stabilize the game and make it even better, since I really enjoy Helldivers 2. And I gotta say, from my personal experience, most of people I've played with were really nice cooperative and friendly people, and thank you for a good time. It's really appreciated. Okay, recording, and let's, uh, let's do the emote. Okay. Fucking A! Boom! <laughs> nice. Again? Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Nice. And thanks to T3 for gifting me the game. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna return the favor. And now that's it for this video. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. And I hope I gave you a better view on the game. Until the next time, have a great day everyone and stay safe as always. If you like this type of content, feel free to like and subscribe for more. This is Crossover Gamer, signing off. Bye bye.